Hello and uh, welcome everyone. Um, I'm extremely pleased to be uh, back on our uh, social media channels and I would like to uh, reach out to everyone following us through our um, through our uh, YouTube and, and Instagram channels and so on. Uh, we are uh, today uh, here to present uh, All Images Will Disappear One Day, uh, the fourth uh, Autostrada Biennale. Um, and uh, this is our August edition of uh, IBA Stage. Uh, I'll quickly introduce the series for everyone that is not familiar with it. IBA Stage uh, is a series of online events in which invited biennials have uh, a chance to deliver a presentation of their most recent project. Uh, the series was started now almost uh, two years ago, um, or a bit more than two years ago, uh, very much as a response to the impossibility of traveling during the height of COVID, uh, uh, but we kept it as part of our public, public program, mostly in, in the intention of creating uh, a long-lasting archive of uh, biennials narrated and discussed uh, with the makers of the banyas themselves. Um, I already mentioned uh, that we are streaming uh, live. Uh, in addition to this, uh, the meeting is also being recorded and will be published on our YouTube channel, edited uh, a few days after, after the meeting itself. Um, and uh, yeah, I think I will move on to uh, to present our, our two guests uh, today, uh, which we're extremely happy to have with us. Um, uh, Vatra Brashi uh, and uh, Leodrim Fischu. Fischu. Uh, thank you for thank you for coming and and thank you for being part of uh, IBA programming twice already in a year because uh, we were in prison uh, just over a year ago. Uh, visiting uh, a beautiful city that you're that is hosting you and that you're from. Um, I'll uh, I'll take one more minute of your time and introduce you properly uh, for those that haven't had the pleasure of meeting you uh, when when uh, when we were there a year ago. Uh, so Vatra <clears throat> is co-founder uh, and educational director of Autostrada Biennale. She was born in Brisbane. Uh, and graduated from the Faculty of, of Philosophy uh, in Pristina. Uh, she worked uh, uh, four years uh, at uh, uh, Council of Defense of Human Rights and Freedoms in Pristina uh, as, a lead, as a leader of various pro uh, projects uh, uh, for the protection of minority rights, gender equality, and children's rights. rights. Uh, then she worked uh, for five years at a, as a pedagogue uh, in the uh, counseling center of SOS Children's uh, Villages in Kosovo. Uh, and uh, in recent years, uh, she focused on developing the Autostrada Biennale uh, as the first international contemporary art uh, Biennale happening in Kosovo. And I'm sure we'll hear all about that uh, in the next half an hour, 40 minutes or so. Uh, and uh, with her um, is uh, Leotrim fischek -Chu. I hope I managed better the second time around, <laughs> who is the co-founder uh, and executive director of Autosola Biennale. Um, he was born in...
Të dashur, miqë, partner, artist, kurator, gazetar dhe ekipi dashur i Autostrada Bienale. Mirë se keni ardhë në edicionin e katërt, e cili të të lotë të gjitha imajët të të shduke në një ditë, kuruar nga e vyldur më sholu dhe Jana Varsha. Through the video, you, you had a chance to see uh, some of the highlights uh, of the opening of the fourth edition of Autostrada Biennale. Uh, we had an openings in Prizren, Pristina, and also Mitrovica, and also like an ongoing exhibition, an exhibition and public program there. Maybe now we can we can start with our also uh, presentation of uh, how we created all this this beautiful edition uh, together with uh, our creators our team amazing artists that were invited but also the community because the community part is very important with us 
we are engaging a lot uh, community in creating artworks, but also in all phases of the preparation from the research program of the Biennale till the, uh, till the end of the whole edition. So this is uh, our Autostrada Hangar, an education, production and exhibition space. Uh, which was created uh, in between two editions, in between the edition, third edition of Autostrada Biennale and fourth edition of Autostrada Biennale, is our institution of contemporary art, uh, which we, in which we have and we organize uh, like a uh, rich public program, but also education program where we engage youngsters uh, from different age group. Uh, this was the space uh, when we got it. Uh, we are placed in ex-military camp, now innovation and training park in Prizren. Uh, it used to be a military uh, in, in military space uh, with uh, two uh, thousand soldiers, but now it's it's turned into innovation and training park. And we were the first one that we got uh, this space, and we were like. Uh, we had this vision of creating an education production and exhibition uh, space. And this came as a need because uh, after first and second edition of Autostrada Biennale, we were, um, we saw that a, a lot of youngsters were applying to be part of Autostrada Biennale and also to work, uh, to work with us, which made us very happy. But when it came to practical work and to work to produce and to work more hands-on, we were seeing that they were lacking a lot because of our education uh, system, which is more focused on theoretical part. So we were thinking about to have this long-term impact on youngsters. We were thinking of having education program even before having a fund, even before having a space. We had this vision that we need to contribute more in our, for our uh, city and our country and our youngsters, because uh, it's, it's also important to mention that 70% uh, of whole population in Kosovo are under 35. So we are very, very young uh, country. Uh, with amazing youngsters which are very creative. So uh, we developed education program uh, based on the needs that we identify by working with youngsters. So uh, we took the space, we bought the machines to work with wood and metal and also textile, uh, media and communication and technology. And then we had an open call where 60 youngsters applied from all over the world and 90% of them were women, which made us very happy. Uh, and through whole year, we had education program where we engaged experts from uh, Kosovo, but also from US and other part of the world in order to come here and work with youngsters not just to make them like work technically by like how to cut with wood and how to work with wood and metal. But for us, it was very important this, uh, uh, how to create, uh, uh, how to become a team from different disciplines and how to come up together, work together, share together. Uh, these soft skills were so important in order, like we were trying to, to make them also think outside the box and come up with a solution. And also we were like trying to create an environment uh, where uh, like um, uh, where they can express themselves, uh, feel that they are like uh, really contributing and all this space that we are all creating together, it's our space and it's the space that they can come work together, produce together. And we are very happy that the whole space of Autostrada Biennale uh, and Autostrada Hangar was created through education program without hiring companies but working as a team like we created this ecosystem of co-creating uh, together uh, and uh, everyone's perspectives and contribution was so important in this uh, phase and all designs and everything was create, uh, were created together uh, another important thing is that uh, in we had a, a small depot when we saved all materials or for, uh, first edition second edition and third edition of Autostrada Biennale and then to create the space, we brought all materials. So 50% of all materials uh, were reusable materials. So we created the space with a, a small budget, but with a very like uh, goodwill and also hard work. 
uh, and uh, yeah, you can see you can see the space, you can see the machines, and everything in the space is on wheels. So you can change the whole setup of the space in uh, like very sh uh, short period of the time. And uh, beside, and we are very happy that beside our education program, we have also. Uh, like we are functioning as an institution, we are organizing different uh, like a public program, lectures, debates, uh, exhibitions, where we are inviting different age groups uh, to visit our space. So we have ongoing education program in our space. Beside Biennale, we have an ongoing uh, education program here. But also we are very happy that we are giving also the space to our partners that they for example, that they may, may need uh, for, for a presentation, for a public program. So unfortunately, it's the only space now that has this uh, heating system and that has all the facilities uh, to function also during the winter time. So we are more than happy to uh, provide these facilities to our partners, individuals. We have uh, this open concept a studio where we are giving a space and machines to artists, designers, researchers to come visit the space, work there, use machines, but also exhibit. We are still doing a Biennale in the city that don't have gallery. So we are a space, we are like providing a space to, to uh, our community in order to, to uh, come uh, work there, produce that and also exhibit. So. For us, this was very important. And we are very happy that through this education program, we also trained a lot of youngsters and they are now employed in Autostrada Biennale as a permanent team, but also as a team of the Biennale. So the whole circle of working with youngsters, now it's that they are also employed here and we are contributing in order like also to give them a space and a platform to meet different like people, uh, artists, amazing artists, curators from all over the world. This was something very important for us uh, when also it's known that we are uh, an, an only country that we need also a visa to travel abroad. So our youngster didn't have a chance to visit uh, beautiful exhibitions uh, all over the world and important biennales also, which are in the region because of this visa issue. So Australia Biennale was a platform also to make this happen by bringing uh, amazing uh, artists, um, theoreticians, creators from all over the world to come here, work together, exchange, but also to create a very good partnership and uh, friendship uh, together. So this made us very, very happy. And also this is making us also to think furthermore in sustainable uh, programs and education programs uh, and to focus on uh, co-creating uh, an art world with, with, uh, with uh, our yeah, youngsters. So it's important also to mention before giving the, the speech also to Leo, it's important to mention that <clears throat> the whole edition of Autostrada Biennale, 17 uh, new uh, uh, <clears throat> work were created and were produced in Autostrada Hangar together with uh, our team, amazing uh, curators and artists, and uh, yeah. yeah. In the screening, we will see also our last member <laughs> lately, who became a member of Autostrada Biennale team, our cat. <laughs> Yumi. So, uh, Yumi. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and Yumi, when you translate in English, means uh, river. So, yeah, thank you, Vatra, for, for a great introduction of, uh, of uh, how we uh, really made many projects that have a long-term impact and the Autostrada Hangar as a space, uh, we think that is the space uh, that will have a long-term impact to our uh, society. So, but also it was super important like time-wise uh, in between the two Biennales to create this space, which will also uh, contribute to develop our fourth edition, the, the edition that is going on, which started on the 7th of July and will continue till uh, the 9th of September, created by uh, Joanna uh, Warsha and Evil Durmusholu. And this year we uh, we extended our edition uh, from Prizren to Pristina and Mitrovica, which is also very, very important for us. So 
Um, maybe I can talk about uh, more how we choose the venues and how we came up to the artist selection of artists and how uh, together with artists and the community here in Kosovo we built uh, artworks because from the beginning our aim was to uh, to bring art to the people not people to the art because we were never thinking of building a gallery you know we were never thinking of inviting people to a certain space you know uh, beside that we were always thinking how to spread to all over the city so in this uh, in this photo that you see it's a, it's a, it's a new map designed for the fourth edition uh, I mean, everything what is on blue, you will recognize that it's uh, for this edition because this is the design and our color of this year. And so you will see kind of uh, how we were concentrated a lot in the ITP, in the zone of uh, ex-military camp, which is now uh, Innovation Training Park, with whom we have a great uh, collaboration. And I would uh, really love to emphasize the collaboration with the ITP management who were ready to give us, beside of having just one hangar, giving us also another four, another three hangars. So at the moment we are managing four hangars, Autostrada hangar as a space for the public program uh, and partly the exhibition of the story of Autostrada hangar. Uh, which is quite important to be seen from the international scene because we already had many visitors, local visitors. Uh, and then the other two hangars that are completely exhibition sites of the fourth edition. And the, the heart of the Biennale, uh, which became lately the heart of Biennale, is one of the hangars became complete the production space. So we have a completely one big, huge hangar, the biggest hangar, let's say, in the ITP, which became uh, lately our production space, where we engaged many experts, our team, Art. youngsters, artists, our curators. I mean, everybody that was really focused on producing artworks, because as Vatra also mentioned, uh, in previous editions, we, we did the transportation of artworks, like... Again, this edition, we did some, but uh, less because we wanted really to have an, an exhibition or, or a Biennale edition that is completely focused on production because we already have the production space, which, uh, I mean, most of the Biennales in the world doesn't have. So we are lucky that we are one of the Biennales that we have the space of production, a team, and therefore, we uh, we have this year of uh, seventeen new commissions, which is uh, like we have thirty artists, and seventeen of them are new commissions and completely produced here, which is more than fifty percent is produced here, which makes us happy and very proud. So in this map, you just see like a uh, like huge concentration in one zone in ex-military camp, and then how we we created a. Uh, 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 a line in between the city center, which is a historical zone uh, where most of the cultural heritage sites buildings are placed uh, with ITP, which is the opposite side of the city. And in between we used many uh, private houses, gardens, uh, streets itself, like vitrines and many other things that are many artworks that are placed in between. So this is quite a uh, important like for us as Autostrada Biennale uh, to uh, to be to be spread all over the city and to be more close to the communities so we don't invite people directly to gallery but we go rather than that we go to the neighborhoods and we engage them directly and not engaging just as uh, visitors or the public as the audience let's say but uh, making them mostly part of the production because when you go to the uh, private houses or, or, or many other uh, public spaces, you directly engage people uh, during the production process and, and not just as uh, visitors. And often they are uh, mediators of the artwork. Yeah. They yeah. are also welcoming people, telling about the artwork, telling the BN about the Biennale, the city of the prison, our like hospitality as a as a 
people like Kosovars. Uh, mm -hmm. So so yeah, it's it's amazing. Yeah, I mean we always see it as a as an important process. I'm I'm also gonna after this uh, uh, presentation of the venues, I'm gonna also talk about uh, the 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 sense of belonging and also the uh, the the uh, the production phase of Biennale. And then uh, here you can see that we are in Pristina as well, in Brick Factory, with uh, really great big two installations of Agnes Dennis, the Sunflower Field, and Hera Buktaschan's uh, work. So both are engaged somehow in this ex uh, Brick Factory. Uh, and then in Mitrovica, we have we are in, with the two artists in the in the Mitrovica Square. We we uh, created a permanent artwork. So this is also something quite interesting. That from this edition we started to create also permanent artworks. Uh, and uh, the other is in the uh, in Seven Arte uh, building in the terrace where we had the Vladan and Rena from Belgrade. Uh, so it's a cultural center in Mitrovica and quite interesting, which has a great terrace and now uh, it's full to be, it's filled with uh, with uh, some artworks. So this is the list of artists uh, that we are proud to have all of them, which are quite engaged, uh, very, very much engaged, let's say, especially in the ones that uh, have this new uh, new productions which came uh, many times in Prizren in the first phase to research to get to know more about the context of the whole Kosovo let's say because the exhibition from the beginning was planned to be in Prizren Pristina and Mitrovica and so here you can see uh, the uh, the artists uh, which are in Prizren and then in Pristina and Mitrovica as well uh, so yeah back to back to the the most exciting uh, phase of the Biennale, I may say, because uh, for us, production of artworks became one of the the main things in, in on what we are doing. Uh, through what we engage uh, many professionals, youngsters uh, from Kosovo and abroad. So here we can see uh, the installation of the artwork of Neda Saidi, which is. Uh, uh, one of the main spots, let's say, in the city center, in the uh, historical zone uh, that you just mentioned, uh, the the, uh, the archaeological sites, because just behind this spot, or because behind us uh, is the, the new archaeological site, just renovated. And here is the Nera's work. It's quite visited also during the night time because also during the night uh, this, the, even though we are open for, with exhibition from 12 to 6 o'clock in our venues but um, as we have many uh, many installations outdoor installation in the public spaces they are visited and uh, many many people especially during this uh, summer time where uh, we have a lot of tourists and also uh, and people from diaspora that are coming back to their home so it's also very good for us for them to see always uh, new developments in their country especially with the festivals biennale and uh, ongoing things so while i'm talking about the production i i'm also sharing some of the photos maybe i have to be a bit more quick uh, this is one of the hangars, uh, empty hangars that we, we got just for this edition. And here you can see Jeff De Jaffa's works, paintings. Uh, so you see partly from the installation uh, process and then the and then the finalized artwork. This is Neda's work, yes. uh, Mila's, Mila Panish's work. And then the School of Mutants, a collective which created a new artwork here, which had also a, a performance during the opening, opening days that Christian couldn't come and couldn't see and could be jealous a bit to see the atm good atmosphere here. <laughs> <laughs> Selma's work. Here is the Sebastian Diaz Molar Morales work together with the Ruan Grupa, some screenings uh, in, 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 in Hangar.
this is also quite interesting uh, in terms of the space uh, and and uh, and uh, and also uh, quite what is going on uh, in Ukraine because here are the drawings of three museums that were bombed just a year ago uh, in Ukraine an open group as a collective from Lviv from Ukraine came and uh, painted uh, the, the the floor plans of these bombed museums and imagine it's now drawn in the ex-military camp the military camp that served for more than 70 years uh, lately as a NATO camp uh, and now uh, which is back to the public so it's a strong uh, connection between our military camps kind of in the world we have now many ongoing uh, wars unfortunately and especially in Europe as well lately so but it's a strong message from Kosovo that we are providing we are that we are giving to the world uh, that we are uh, reclaiming the spaces and bringing back the military camps bringing back to the bringing back to the uh, public for education and arts and culture. And then the legendary artwork of a legendary artist, Agnes Dennis, the sunflower field, which is just in front of our hangar and in Pristina. This is the uh, artwork that we created for Mitrovica uh, and is now placed uh, there as a permanent artwork. So our new branded uh, t-shirts, things and uh, installations maybe i'm gonna be a bit uh, quick i don't know if we have time christian let us know but uh, yeah these were mostly uh, the, the the process that we wanted to share as a, as an important thing of what uh, we are doing uh, so yes this was quite uh, short. I mean, we wanted to be a bit uh, shorter uh, to show the process of what we have created, what we have done. Uh, but if you want, we can go on also with the questions and conversation because it would be better maybe to have to make it more interactive. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. First of all, thanks a lot for the for the quick overview. And I think there's a lot more to dig into. So I hope that during the conversation, we can explore more of, uh, of the things that you discussed. Uh, I turned my camera on quickly when you when you mentioned me, but I have to say that I was, I was smiling throughout the presentation for how inspiring the whole biennial, but also the whole process is. Uh, no, and this is something that I think many of us have felt uh, also last year when we were there but um, of course every time we hear more about it and we understand more of the ways in which you're constructing uh, a, a project in a biennial that feels very much able to <clears throat> uh, to encapsulate uh, localities and local interests and questions and so on but also really constructed in a way that feels very sustainable and very uh forward looking let's say no and and uh, and i think what you're doing with with hangar and with the team that you're building is a uh, is a very good representation of that um yeah i mean i have a, a ton of questions but maybe i can start very quickly by asking how the sunflowers are doing because we were there during winter so it was uh, after harvest time but I'm I'm hoping that now you have a beautiful field of sunflowers again in front of the hangar. Uh, I mean, it's not a serious question, but somehow <laughs> it's a way of starting and reconnecting with the place, uh, which, uh, yeah, which, as you mentioned, unfortunately, I couldn't come for the opening, but uh, I, I was happy to see some of the scenes from the opening. Uh, which looked extremely festive and and uh, like a communal uh, celebration, basically. Um, yeah, so maybe we can start with that and expand it a little bit. <clears throat> um, and uh, yeah, maybe I can start with a very broad question about this 
uh, collegial spirit that I think was very well represented in the way that you produce the works and the way that you engage with the communities and so on. Um, and I think especially in a city like Brisbane, which uh, I remember as this very beautiful but complex layering of different histories, different periods, different cultures and so on. Um, how did you, yeah, how did you achieve this level of, I don't know, also festive element, let's say, in the, in the Banyan, which is not always the case, of course. Sometimes uh, it becomes more of a, uh, yeah, like an art, uh, like an art event and so on, but it feels like something more than that. Uh, so maybe I can ask you to start with that. First of all, some flower fields are like, now very happy and bloomed. <laughs> uh, it's our third time that we are plan planting and we have this continuous uh, project which was very important because for the first time we as Autostrada Biennale team we decided to have same curators for two editions uh, because uh, I mean this was from the both sides of course also from our dearest curators we were thinking of because we were doing also Biennale in the period of the pandemic and uh, also together with creators we developed this uh, model of tandem Biennale in between international uh, artists and researchers but also local ones so we developed very deep conversations uh, and it was also very beautiful uh, a journey uh, of the third edition and also another important thing was to have this sustainability so not to stop from biennale to an, from one edition to another edition but we were thinking that some of the projects uh, can also develop more and have deeper uh, impact uh, on our society one of them was also some flower field which was planted uh, in in uh, pristina last edition uh, in the youth uh, palace uh, and sports, but all, like in the middle of like city where a lot of buildings and chaotic uh, urban development were, were like placed. So bringing some flower field uh, with Agnes Danis, a new artwork that she, uh, she proposed for Kosovo was very powerful. And, but also then we continued with some flower field in prison uh but what we saw this edition because we were seeing that this global warming that agnes danis as an artist were working a lot with the environmental uh project uh it's really happening because of two three months of the heavy rain that we have had in prison in kosovo some flower field like brought all this the circle like normal circle so they started to bloom maybe two weeks ago which was not normal uh, compare with last year's and uh, like uh, third edition of Autostrada Biennale. So it was uh, important to see through three years how the, the global warming is happening and it's very serious. In this case, we planted some flower field together with community on Earth Day, 22nd of April, together with kids, environmental activists. So it was a great, uh, like also like a huge uh, campa campaign campaign. Uh, planting together with this community and uh, it was important like also to maintain together with them and then to see some flower field bloom but also to have rich public program around it but we saw that the the, the situation uh, it's more serious that we are thinking and uh, you can easily see also with this uh, very important uh, artwork um maybe i can not, yeah on this a little bit yeah. Uh, because that was the other thing that I wanted to start with, and I'm very glad that you mentioned that. Um, uh, that you mentioned that, uh, and I know I'm overlapping a little bit the two questions, but I do think that it will all lead us to the same uh, uh, to the same goal. Um, <clears throat> but I do think it's important to mention it because you're among very few biennials, if at all, uh, that I can think of that kept the same curators, and I think some of the same artists as well between yeah. multiple editions yeah. <clears throat> and um, you mentioned that this was a very clear uh, decision both by you and the curators um, and I want to try to understand what this changed in your way of working because you had two editions without uh, Avril and, and, and Joanna before that um, 
yeah, so I'm, I'm very I'm very much interested in understanding how this worked and how how your relationship with them developed and how their relationship with Blizzard and with the themes that you were developing uh, uh, expanded or or what what this double role looks or let's say or this doubled up uh, um, assignment let's say uh, uh, helped the dialogue and so on and I think this also builds on on what we were saying before about the communities and, and the history. So, so. Uh... This was very, I think it was a best decision that we as a team firstly come up because uh, being in third edition, we were also thinking about how also the beautiful uh, exhibition was uh, co-created with the uh, artist and also with the community. Um, so what if these conversations will continue? So the whole edition was what if, <laughs> what if a journey? If a journey? <laughs> so we were thinking what if, we will continue uh, together for another edition in order to have this continuous the conversations with uh, with the community. But also, we were thinking that now also that Evil and Joanna know the president, know the context, know the Kosovo. It will be also easier for them to really uh, engage even deeper with uh, with our context and uh, bring also like. Uh, to to link this to addition, but also to bring also something completely different by doing another like uh, other researches, engaging also other partners, but still the context is like like it, it was. So we were like insisting on having this uh, long term conversations with uh, artists, communities, but also the whole topic that we were also treating through the third edition and also to have this link of the fourth edition. And I think it was great uh, feedback, uh, feedback, but also it was a great work. And I think also for our creators, it was amazing when they saw how uh, like we were like developing with Autostrada Hangar. They were super excited and super like happy to see our developments because we were even like we uh, created uh, Autostrada Hangar in between two editions. This was our long term plan because after one uh, first and second edition, we were like thinking of having a production and exhibition space and education program. But uh, then we were like uh, searching for space for funds and everything. So uh, also for them, like uh, seeing this development and then seeing that we have also capacities with our teams and the teams that we de develop through our education program, we can also produce. So it was a uh, biggest numbers that we ever produced uh, as an artwork. So also the conversations in between uh, artists and our team were beautifully developed, and this uh, made us uh, so happy. And yep. uh, it, <laughs> it sounds uh, yeah. <clears throat> it sounds. If I hadn't seen it, I would sound. It sounds too good to be true, but I've seen it, so I know that it exists. <laughs> <laughs> So it's definitely we were not it's, seeing, but we were like feeling. We were like feeling, yeah. and then, uh, yeah, it was organically like developed. Mm. It wasn't something so much planned and everything, but you have this sense of something is functioning and can, like, even better developed and have even better impact on it. So it wasn't something that we were like so much focused on thinking and analyzing, but we truly believe that this will uh, also uh, also function. Mm. Uh, you mentioned, I mean, you talked a lot about uh, Autostrada Hangar, and I think it's it's essential to understand the, the core of the, of, also of the biennial in a way. Um, and you mentioned that it's a space that during non-biennial times, so when there is not, not the biennial, it's a space that you're sharing also with your partners and, and, uh, and so on. Uh, you mentioned already all the elements that link to education, to education of your team, uh, to production and so on. Uh, but I think it's also used as an exhibition space when it's not uh, biennial times. Yes. Uh, and is this, uh, are these exhibitions that you're organizing together with your partners, what, whoever these partners are, I guess, locally and, uh, and so on? Uh, or is it uh, your own exhibitions, let's say, alone? Uh, so what kind of uh, use is there of the space outside the biennial times, let's say? 
First of all, like uh, the Autostrada Hangar, it was transformed less than one year. <laughs> so we opened as a as a space last uh, last year uh, on, in March, and from from that uh, like period, like in one year, we had like ongoing education programs here, but also exhibition. One of the exhibitions that we decided to keep it uh, keep up going, it was a story of Autostrada Hangar. Uh, and uh, yeah, we, we thought that it's important also for like visitors and also our partner and other people to see this story because I think it's also inspiring story uh, of, uh, of uh, creating uh, Autostrada Hangar. And also we want, it is also ongoing exhibition, photographic, photography exhibition of the third edition of Autostrada because we were thinking that it's nice for the visitors that uh, couldn't have a chance to visit third edition to have this link in between third edition and also then to see fourth edition but of course uh, this will and also the videos we have video of, of education program video of how we transform the space and video of the documentary film of uh, third edition of autostrada biennale uh, we are thinking of of course having ongoing exhibitions here uh, for artists, uh, local artists that don't have a space also to, to exhibit, but also we have this um, multifunctional uh, corner and space, which is also a, a big space that we are giving to our partners for their public program presentation. Of course, they have to be in our same values and not like commercial uh, companies that want to use the space or have something. But we, I mean, organizations that are dealing with human rights, cultural organization, educational organizations, we are giving a, a space uh, for free, like to use it uh, for, for their uh, activities. But also we are developing this open studio concept program where we are like giving our atelier part to artists and creative people to use it for 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 their like artworks and if they would need for example to produce something uh, we can also like provide them a team and uh, we can help them in producing producing artworks and we are very happy that uh, last year we also produced for ministry of culture uh, a gallery of the ministry of culture on artworks uh, for the artist uh, Asriti Swaidi. So Autostrada Biennale is already, Autostrada Hangar is seeing as a production space from uh, all over the, uh, the, the states. So when when our partners needs, for example, mm -hmm. help or they needs like our support to produce uh, an artwork or something, we, we are there to, to make it happen. <laughs> so, so it's not a, it's not a kind of just we produce for our biennale or exhibitions for our space, but it's more also related to be open for production and to be supportive for different galleries as well. So galleries, festivals, like we now have a plenty of like uh, many requests from theater festivals, for example, to produce their uh, their stages and scenography, you know, like all things, and many other uh, other exhibition sites, galleries that are interested to develop projects with us, and not just in Kosovo, but we are talking about also wider in the in the Balkan region, because we never placed ourselves as an Autostrada Biennale. Uh, 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 Mm -hmm. a Biennale of Prizren or Pristina or Kosovo. Therefore, we also named it from the beginning, like Autostrada, we are on the highway and we never know where we stop or where we, we go we on each edition. And our projects are like, we are, let's say, open uh, for many projects uh, to develop together with our regional partners as well, as we are already doing. So, and additionally, what uh, Autostrada Hangar as a space uh, gives is to community is also uh, it's a newly established kitchen uh, we have now a kitchen of hangar which is open for public in for three hours 12 to three o'clock but it's more related to the not as a restaurant but it's more related to the promotion of the healthy. of the healthy food it's a veg vegetarian kitchen uh, so, and uh, having a huge garden where is now sunflower field, which which life cycle is ending uh, on mid of uh, of September when also our edition will end. So we are really thinking to develop many 
uh, projects in so-called this uh, green pavilion that we say like uh, as, a, as a huge uh, field uh, in front of Hangar, kind of uh, developing uh, with food researchers, with uh, uh, environmental activists to develop many programs that are related to the environment. So this is the kind of connection between like Hangar and its field, outdoor field, like bringing together and using each centimeter uh, per square of the whole areas that we are managing to use them uh, for the community, you know, and to treat many issues as environment is. Urgent. Yeah. As an urgent, yeah, as an urgent uh, question. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I have many more questions because I know that you're also part of some international residency programs that are connected to food and... Uh, I wanted to yeah, mention this, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so there, I, I don't know, there's many things that I, that I think we should talk about, but I want to reconnect a little bit to this last edition, because ultimately yes. I think we should talk a little bit about uh, uh, what Vyrl and, and Joanna have, have put together. Um, and one question that I, that I had during the presentation is uh, regarding specifically I mean, there were two directions, one more related to Prisren and one more, more related to the overall project. Um, and uh, I will start with the generic and then we'll, we'll focus in on Prisren. Uh, I wanted to know more about the decision to exhibit also in Pristina and, uh, and Mitrovica. Uh, because I think it's uh, it's quite a clear statement and uh, I think it would be great to hear more about that. Um, and connected to that, because you mentioned that the works in uh, in uh, Mitrovica are permanent works, and this might be a bit of a more narrow question, but I do think it's relevant for our public, which is mostly biennial makers across the world and so on. It's very rare that biennial engage, biennials engage in the production of permanent works uh, because of the heritage of them, let's say, who takes care of them, who you find as partner that maintain them and so on. Uh, so yeah, more specifically about the permanent works, I wanted to know how you negotiated this. Um, but first of all, why did you go to Pristina uh, and uh, and Metrovica? <laughs> uh, Leo was mentioning that uh, from the beginning, of course, our hometown is Prizren. Uh, most of the exhibitions uh, is placed also in Prizren. Uh, it's, spread all, it's spread it all over the city. But we were never like uh, thinking of like also naming our Biennale with related to the city, but uh, how also if there is needed to 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 be in a, another city to treat some of the issues in, in in other cities, we are open open uh, open to go to go there, uh, and uh, for the first time we went to Pristina on in third edition of Autostrada Biennale with uh, two artworks, uh, Petrit Halilais and uh, Alvaro Urbano's Forget Me Not, beautiful installation in the uh, National Library, but also some flower field of uh, Agnes Danis in Youth Palace. Uh, why we decided to go there? Because it was uh, important, uh, the whole artwork of uh, Petrit, it was also developed uh, together with the partners there. And also it was related to civil code and the law there. So we were uh, like, because we every topic that we are treating, every, every artwork, we are treating based on research that we are doing one year before the Biennale. So it was important uh, like to bring this artwork in the uh, national uh, library and uh, to, treat this theme uh, deeper there. But also Agnes Danas, it was like amazing content wise related to Pristina, bringing like some flower fields there in the city, which is very urbanized in chaotic in some, some ways. So, uh, and this was the why we, we were there, but also why we decided to be again in Pristina, uh, because um, we saw that the uh, brick factory is something that uh, it was like very important, uh, important uh, fabric in, in Pristina and in development of whole country in ex uh, Yugoslavian like period of time. 
And then uh, now it, his uh, like the status of the brick factory still is in, unknown, and the municipality is trying to to uh, like give it back to the community and create a hub there. But still, it's 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 in process. So while we were in partnership also with uh, Pristina uh, municipality, we were thinking and analyzing what we can do to really again pay attention to this uh, and also to treat uh, like. Um, different artworks in, in this part of the city, which is very, very important. And then during the research with Hera, uh, she, she is doing like a great uh, research on waters, which she started in prison in third edition of Autostrada Biennale, doing a deep research on missing waters and memory of the water channels in prison. And then knowing that also in the brick factory, we had like uh, waters there and uh, Pristina had before like had also the river. It was a city that has also river now that it had a river, but now don't have it. So treating this uh, also theme and bringing this also to community and also to discuss it more, it was very important. And uh, about the permanent artwork of, uh, of um, uh, like uh, in, in Mitrovica, it, it's very important because uh, last edition, Alban Moya, artist, uh, was also invited from our creators, uh, and he was uh, also uh, mentioning that in Mitrovica, in the uh, in the city center, it was uh, like a great installation uh, done in late sixties uh, uh, in ex Yugoslavia period, which was treated, uh, which was treated a theme of. Um, equality, work, and also education. Very beautiful artwork, which all the uh, community in Mitrovica was very close to this. They were grew up with this uh, installation in the middle of the, uh, of the city. But then suddenly in 2008, it was disappeared. And no one knows about the, the fate of this uh, monument. So uh, with the initiative of the Alban Muya, but also uh, uh, municipality. yes, municipality, uh, I mean, first, Alvan Moya was invited to, to do the smaller scale of this artwork in, in Prizren, where also uh, three uh, monuments will also disappear. So it was this link. When we threw a, uh, through a public program, we had many discussion about the fate of the monuments in public spaces, the collective memories, and how we can uh, also uh, like pay attention to to uh, monuments in public spaces and save them and uh, protect them, and uh, so then after after this uh, we had a call from uh, uh, municipality of Mitrovica and mayor and also director of culture uh, that they wanted to uh, bring it back. The monument wanted to bring it back in the in the city of the Mitrovica where it was. And uh, so this uh, collaboration and going to meet Trovica, it was like organically developed and it made us very happy because it was like great impact also of the Biennale. You, you saw this from third edition to the fourth edition. And then uh, we started to produce uh, this uh, amazing uh, artwork, uh, amazing monument uh, in Autostrada Hangar. And it's our first um, permanent uh, artwork uh, in 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 Mitrovica. I mean that we, that we did together with uh, with our team and with our artists. And we were so happy when we were installing this artwork. There were a lot of people coming there, also hugging there uh, our team and everyone. They were so emotional that this uh, monument is now back to Mitrovica to uh, his uh, so hometown. So it was naturally because it was needed. It's not something that we for sure want to be in another city or something like that. Maybe uh, next edition it will be just in prison. So it's not that it's something that we are like uh, know from now that we will be in this city. It depends on the project, on the artwork, artists, and also research program, but also creators. So there are many other like things to be taking consider before like going to uh, one city. Yeah, I actually knew about uh, the project that Alban was uh, thinking about in, in about this this monument. Yes, uh, 
so it's uh, I mean it's great that it happened and it's great that uh, that you were part of it and that you could that you could contribute not just in making it happen but in physically producing the work. No, I think yes, it's... absolutely, it makes us very happy. And also our team was so emotional. So yeah, <laughs> very nice. Um, yeah, time is cruel. Uh, I have written down another series of questions, but I'll try to focus on maybe two last ones, <laughs> uh, not to go too much over time. Um, but uh, maybe to focus more on prison with this next question. Um, you mentioned and you showed in the video uh, and in the presentation afterwards, uh, the variety of spaces that you inhabited with the uh, with the band. You know? So it's public spaces, it's more private spaces, it's the official space of the hangar, and so on. Um, and uh, you did mention a lot already about the work that you did with the community to make them almost uh, custodians and, and mediators of these works. Um, but can you give can you give me and us a bit more of a sense of how you constructed this relationship? Because I can imagine, uh, I mean, I think this is something that we all encountered, uh, especially with contemporary art. Uh, uh, maybe some people don't know much about it, don't understand what's going on and so on. So in what way did you mediate this with, uh, with the people that then ended up being the custodians and the mediators of these, uh, of these works? Uh, before before uh, even creating Autostrada Biennale, when we were like opening this discussion, uh, there were a lot of people in, in prison, like from a uh, cultural community here, they were saying that we, I mean, do you think that we, uh, in, in prison in Kosovo, we, you have audience for contemporary art? So uh, we were like, we were very sure from the beginning that if you are going to the people with the right approach, they will immediately be and feel themselves part of it. So uh, I, I, I'm not saying that it was easy, 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 but uh, I think that, I mean, it's huge uh, work from like 2014 when we established the uh, Autostrada as an organization together with Leo Trim and also Barosh, another co-founder. We are three co-founders. We were closely working with, uh, with the community and also we uh, we were spread it all over the city from the castle from old houses and we were going to to their houses we were sitting with them we were uh also meeting artists with them through uh, this research phase with the uh, curators so they were hosting us very warmly in their houses listening to us so it was like daily work with the community in order to prepare them but also to inform them what we are doing for our city and when we were like talking with them so open, they were so open also to open their doors for other people. So uh, this was our, I mean, this is continuous our work, like daily work that we are doing all the time. Now that we have also Autostrada Hangar, we are also inviting uh, uh, them here to see. So we are trying to keep this conversation so close, even if we are not like, uh, using these uh, spaces for this edition, it's so important to keep them and to keep these uh, relations alive through through all all the time. So this was like daily daily our work that we we were doing as a team, and we are continuously doing. And we are very happy that our partners through years were grown as also institutional partners like the city and other which because to be spread I mean to spread all over the city you need to have a lot of partners <laughs> like uh, doing also Biennale in the like historical zone there are a lot of procedures also like using a castle uh, uh like um, other cultural heritage sites so it's also like huge work uh, to 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 engage them and to work with them closely and uh, to to involve them in the process from the beginning when we like uh when we involve them in the process from the beginning they feel so close with the biennale so they are feeling that they are part of it and they are like willing, willing to 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 make it happen for the, the better of the city and everyone. So and they are so enthusiastic when they, they are seeing that a lot of visitors are coming. They have a questions. They will say, "I tell them about this and that." So they are sharing other stories. So it's very natural and beautiful uh, process also. <laughs> yep. 
sounds uh, yeah sounds amazing uh i think you know that we're working on this document about biennials and and one of the last meetings that we had was titled uh, biennials and as listening institutions i think yours is a brilliant example of how this can be done in the best possible way uh so yeah thank you Thank you for the work and 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 uh, for for the time today. Maybe one last thing that I want to ask you, and this is something more instrumental, because since the biennial is still ongoing for the last for the next two weeks, and you mentioned that there is a full program, uh, maybe you can tell us a bit more about this. Uh, what awaits us and what awaits Brisbane for the last two weeks? What what have you planned? <laughs> Um, starting from this weekend, we will have a workshop with kids in prison, Pristina and Mitrovica. Uh, for example, in Pristina, uh, the workshop will be focused on Hera's uh, Biktashian work and also Agnes Dana's work. And in Mitrovica, Alban's and Vladan's work, Rena and Vladan's work. And also in prison, there will be uh, some of the artworks also like... Uh, main like hi highlighted because we have ongoing uh, workshops here with, with kids and then we will have also um, guided tours which are now planned with uh, students uh, and uh, in September we will have students from university to, uh, that uh, Erbil is also uh, teaching there so they will come here for one week they will see a whole exhibition and also artist Hong, uh, Hong Kai Wang. She will have uh, together with uh, amazing art, local artist Besa, they will have together a workshop in prison. Uh, we are planning to have a workshop together with uh, Dardan Zegrova, uh, an artist of this edition and his mother. Uh, they will be together creating a puppets. Uh, Daringa Mitich, she will be, I mean, she's an artist, but she will do also a workshop together with uh, with the kids and youngsters here. So there are series of uh, workshops that artists of this edition will be engaged, but also other uh, experts and other uh, artists and architects that we are continuously working with them will organize some of the acti activities. And also Edish Galushi, um, he will also be engaged with some educational activities and also activization of the artwork of School of Mutants, which is ongoing and it's movable uh, artwork that we, we are uh, ongoing organizing different uh, education activities. And additionally, what uh, we already have started from the beginning are the guided tours that we are giving for free. So every uh, Wednesday and Saturday, we are giving for free uh, guide the tours uh, in three cities. And then uh, what we do uh, is also um, each Sunday, we have family days. So we are uh, really welcoming here in Autostrada, Hangar, especially uh, many uh, families, like, like, like young parents that are bringing their kids as we also created the corner for kids here. So it's coming like really, it, it makes us as a Biennale completely uh, an uh, inclusive project, you know, like it's, we are not talking about something exclusive, you know, like, but it's completely uh, inclusive projects open for different uh, age groups, for different communities. Elders we had. Elderies we had for elderies, for example, we had, uh, and uh, what is also interesting is that through some support of Allianz Foundation, we got a van of Autostrada Biennale, and now we are also uh, getting with this van of Biennale, we are getting uh, many people, you know, around from city, bringing to Hangar, uh, kids as well, like elderies that uh, Vatra just mentioned. Uh, some other, uh, in collaboration with some other uh, organizations, uh, which are with uh, people with disabilities. So we are bringing also them in hangars as they are quite, uh, quite uh, approachable, you know, accessible. like accessible uh, as uh, hangars, you know. So this is all what we are doing and we will keep going on till 9 of September. Wonderful. Uh, yeah. feels like uh, i mean given the amount of uh, things you just listed i hope you have time to sleep in between <laughs> it's, uh, it sounds amazing i mean it's uh, yeah it's it's really inspiring to hear all the things that you're managing to do there and uh, uh yeah we definitely will uh, keep a close eye on on what's happening in the future and uh, uh look forward to 
uh, to see how it how it will develop. And uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for like beautiful energy also and the great questions that you brought up us. It was real pleasure to to uh, share uh, everything that we were doing that we are continuously doing. So yeah, I, I enjoyed a lot. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, and I will realize all the many things we have to do. Like, <laughs> <laughs> for 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 everyone interested, I, I imagine all the all the information you gave now are visible also on your website, which is linked in the articles that we published. So whoever is interested in in going to Brisbane and to Pristina and uh, Mitrovica for these last two weeks, I'm sure you can find all the information there. And uh, yeah, with this, I think we can conclude today's session. I just want to remind everyone, you included, that our 10th General Assembly is upcoming. It will take place between the 2nd and the uh, 7th of September in Sao Paulo. I assume you'll be busy with your closing, but uh, we will bring you there in spirit, definitely. <laughs> and uh, for everything else, of course, uh, keep an eye on our social media, on our website for upcoming events. Uh, and uh, yeah, thank you very much for the time today. It was wonderful to, to have you with us. Thank you. Thank you very thank much. You it too. was a pleasure. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.